day in the very average, normal life of Susan Thornhill. Normal until today, that is, when her world has vanished into a nightmare. She's headed to the reference section, looking for some answers. Wes, uh, I'm in your, in your history class. I remember you. Oh, good, good. Uh, that makes this 1% uh, less awkward then, I guess. Um, listen, uh, a bunch of my friends and me are going to go to this uh, concert on Saturday. And uh, I have an extra ticket, and I was wondering if maybe you'd like to come with me. Thanks, but I'm not really into concerts. Uh, well, yeah, me neither, really. I mean. And why did you get the ticket? Well, honestly, uh, I was trying to get you to go out with me. And I thought it'd be an inducement, you know, like when they give you the free DVD to get you to buy the player. And hey, I'll tell you what, if you come out with me, uh, I'll throw in a free DVD. Thanks, but I really have to run. OK, a free DVD player, but it's my final offer. Go to the concert. Stop being so shy. Meet some people. Take some chances. Reach out and grab life while you can. You're not getting any younger, you know. I'm 19. I might still have a few good years left. Susan, all you do is run and study. You've been here six months, and you've got exactly one friend on campus. Hello, Gail. Hi, Professor. And you probably wouldn't even hang with me if we hadn't been friends since third grade. I'm just not comfortable around new people. You know that. Get out of your comfort zone. There's a whole big world of people out there to make friends with. Otherwise, when you're 80, you'll lie on your deathbed and say, because I was a little shy in college, I died miserable and alone. <laughs> Come on.
student. Do you have your registration card? What? Oh, no matter, you'll bring it next time. Today we are examining <gasps> the concerto in F minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. As in most of Bach's later works, please. Have a seat. But they're dead. <laughs> have a seat. Pay particular attention to the harpsichord in the second movement. It's quite spectacular. I must insist that you sit down. Baroque music is an acquired taste. You have to give it a chance. Oh, you're crazy! Oh, that attitude is going to screw your grade. possible.
Hello? Who is this? Where is everybody? What are you gonna do with the knife, Susan? Look, who is this? Where are you? The knife can't protect you. You're going to die. I already know that, Susan. How do you know my name? Oh. What are you gonna do with the knife? You wanna kill me? You gonna kill yourself? Where is everybody? You really don't know, do you? You're one of those. One of what? You came to look at the newspapers, right? Right over there. Take a look. I spotted it five months ago. I tried to stop it, but it's ten times the size of the one that killed the dinosaurs. They say nothing's gonna survive. Still, most everybody's hiding out somewhere basements or old underground bomb shelters. Some people killed themselves. Some people just went crazy. But you, however, seem to be basically okay. Except for a little case of hysterical amnesia. Doomsday? I didn't just want to spend my last days, you know, cooped up in some dark basement somewhere. You know, and, and there's always... Been so many books that I've wanted to read, but just, you know, never had time to before, so... There I am, you know? With my books and my memories. Hey, you remember, uh, the time that I asked you out in your freshman year? Yeah, I remember. You know, you should have said yes. I mean, who knows? We might have fallen in love. I've never been in love. It's an amazing feeling. And then there's times when, you know, you wake up at two in the morning and you just, you just gotta be with that person. So you wake her up. You know, you ask her if she wants to just take a walk with you. And we're in particular just to walk and hold hands under the night sky. Was I, I... I don't know if I'm here for a reason or if the whole universe just turned upside down. But I know one thing. When I woke up this morning, it was March 13th, 2001. It's just your mind playing tricks. Something happened when I went through the maze. I felt this chill, and... When I came out, I was here in this time. Maybe if I go back through the maze... Can get home. Susan, where's the knife? I will not tolerate you cutting glass. Read it. Look. Face it, it's over. There's nothing we can do now, except wish that we'd done more when we had the chance. There's really no more time. 
I guess we think we'll never run out. But we did. I could have known you better. So I was wondering if you still had an extra concert ticket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like two in the morning. I know, it is. But um, I thought maybe you might want to go for a walk. Me too. Nowhere in particular. Yeah, I'd love to. Nothing lasts forever, kids. Try not to forget that. Every small town has its secrets. Eli Weston is about to discover that some secrets are best left buried. P. 
feet? What? You doing your homework? Yeah, Mom. Just check it. German car is Italian food, you moron. Excuse me. Are you lost? Uh, emotionally, maybe, but physically, no, not anymore. Been walking for, I don't know, how many hours to get to your fair city. Oh, we may be fair, but I wouldn't call us a city. W what would you call it, then? Home. Must be nice to have one. <laughs> I'm Eli. Lucinda. Look, my car broke down on the main road. Is there anybody around here might be able to help me out? Sure. I'll call Larry Barton. He's our mechanic. He'll open a shop for you. Wow. <laughs> Where I'm from, you'd need a court order to get a mechanic to open up on Sunday. <laughs> well, welcome to Harmony. I really appreciate you doing this. The important thing is getting you up and running. Have you, uh... Worked on Alfa Romeo before? It should be no problem. To me, a car is a car. I'll have you on your way in no time. Yeah, well, uh, no rush. I wasn't headed anywhere in particular, you know, just driving and happened to end up someplace good. Yeah, you did. I'll give you a call over at Mrs. Finch's as soon as I work up an estimate. Who's Mrs. Finch? She runs the bed and breakfast on Oak. She's expecting you. Lucinda set it up.
three bucks a night. Well, it's wrong to take advantage of someone else's bad luck. Besides, you're not going to be here with us long anyway. Larry's a fine mechanic. I don't suppose you uh, have a TV somewhere? No. Uh, no radio either. I never cared for those things myself. They're so distracting. Always made me lose my place in a book. I'll leave some sandwiches in the downstairs fridge in case you want something to eat. Harmony, Al. Welcome to Mayberry. You just stop that right now. Sorry, didn't mean anything by it. Whistling, uh, the sound, it, it sets off my migraines. I'd be obliged if you didn't do it while you're here. Sure, no problem. set up okay yeah everyone's been <laughs> fantastic i've never heard amazing grace spoken before it's a local tradition because yeah, usually people sing it eli i want you to meet my brother tim hey <laughs> poor woman she lost her son he fell down a flight of stairs is he a friend of yours he was the only friend I had in this stupid place. Tim. Tim's just having a little trouble readjusting to small town life. My parents moved us to Chicago for eight years until recently. What brought you back? Well, at first it was exciting. The big city, new friends, new school, a whole new world for me and for Tim. My parents opened a small jewelry store on Hennessy Street. Then, two years ago, I got a call at college. There had been a robbery at the store. Both my parents were killed. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Suddenly, the big city didn't seem so glamorous. So here I am. The people in Harmony don't even lock the doors. Well, see how it'd be a bit boring for a teenager. was just fantastic. Oh, Mrs. Finch is the best cook in Harmony. You still have room for apple pie? Oh, uh, maybe later. Uh, don't worry, I'll clear the rest. Oh, well, in that case, I think I'll turn in. Uh, Lucinda, you'll keep an eye on our guest, won't you? I'll make sure he doesn't steal the silver. <laughs> Good night, then. Good night. Good night. So, where were you headed when your car broke down? That's a good question. I guess I was getting sick of the city myself, because suddenly I felt desire to get in my car and start driving. Maybe, without even knowing it, I was headed here. The 
This town's not for everyone. I mean, we're happy, but it comes at a price. Lucinda, may I speak to you for a moment? I thought you went to bed. Excuse me. about my migraines. Sorry. Calm down. I told him about my migraines. Calm down, Eleanor. You better go, Lucinda. Wait. I'll go with you. No. We probably should call it a night. Maybe I'll see you around tomorrow. Bye. I'm closing up downstairs. Your bed has been turned down. It's true. There's no music here. Have you seen any TVs or radios or guitars or pianos? No, because there aren't any. There's no singing here either. At the damn Little League games, everyone stands up and talks a Star Spangled Banner. And if anyone catches you listening to a CD, you end up like Pete. Or they're freaks. They got this weird idea about something they call the Beast. The Beast? Nobody, just saying my prayers. Well, that's always a good idea. Why would everybody believe in it? It would have come, you know. Please. Can I see the gun? Yeah.
you are. Been looking for you. Your car's all ready. Where's, where's Lucinda? I took the liberty of packing up your gear. You are good to go. I said, where's Lucinda? There's no charge for your car or your bed. kid do? Found this one. That belongs to me. He stole it from you. Kneel down, Tim. You crazy? What are you doing? It's the fair way. We each take care of our own backyard here. The Beast won't tolerate music. The Beast? What the hell are you talking about? I told you they're nuts. We're talking about the Beast, mister. It's awakened by music, and then it kills. And not just the guilty. Anyone. Anyone in its path. That's why we can't have music here. We're not bad people. Lucinda. It's true. We have a good life here. But like I told you, there's a price. How can I let Tim cause the death of who knows how many people? Would that be right? He's been warned before, mister. It's the right way. It's the only way. Have you seen it? Has anyone ever seen it? We don't see it, mister, because we don't bother it. No one has seen it in over 150 years. But we know. That's right. Stories of it have been handed down for generations. Stories, exactly. Folk tales, ignorant superstitions. You're wrong. The beast is a myth. You forbid music, why? Because music makes you feel. Joy, ecstasy, longing, sexual desire, those are all feelings that music brings, and that's what you're afraid of. So you pacify yourself with this absurd myth, and you do anything to preserve your stultifying serenity. You even kill your own children. That ain't it, mister. I know it might look like that, but that ain't it. Kneel down, sweetheart. Let your sister do her duty, or the rest of us will have to hold you down. Grab him. All right. Grab him. Don't! No, there is no beast! You are the beast, all of you! Lucinda, look at me. I'll prove it to you. Amazing. Shut up! How sweet. Oh, stop it! Sound that saved a wretch like me. Where's the beast? I sang, you heard the music. Where's the damn beast? What if he's right? What if we are the beast? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I'm sorry, too. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Next time you scoff at someone else's beliefs, remember, behind every legend is a kernel of fact.